Good morning everyone. Greetings from PMG. I am Ekta from PMG team and today we will be discussing about curd manufacturing. So in today's module we will first understand what is curd and what is the science behind curd making and then what is the curd manufacturing process. Apart from this we will also learn about the difference between curd and yogurt. So let us first see what is curd. Curd is popularly known as Dahi in India. According to PFA, Dahi is defined as a semi-solid product obtained from pasteurized or boiled milk by storing it using harmless lactic acid cultures. It is recommended that to make a good quality Dahi, it should contain at least 11-13% to of SNF that is the solid not fat and around 5% of fat. As you can see, fermentation is the science behind curd making. Fermentation is one of the simplest ways of preserving milk constituent for human consumption. During fermentation, bacteria ferment as sugar lactose into lactic acid. And this lactic acid makes the milk more acidic, lowering its pH, causing the proteins in the milk to coagulate and turning it into a curd. Thus, the acidity gives the curd its little tangy flavor, while the coagulated proteins result in a thick and creamy texture of the curd. This slide shows the process flowchart for curd manufacturing process, where the first step is reception of milk. Once the milk is received at the dock, it is sent for the quality analysis. Analysis of protein content is done by Gildal method. Fat content is taken by Gerber method. Bacterial count is done by the Leishman method, in which bacteria are grown at 30 degrees Celsius for around 72 hours in 0.001 ml of milk with nutritive substrate present in it. The bacteria count is then taken by a special screen. The freezing point of milk is checked to determine whether or not it has been diluted with water. Milk of normal composition has a freezing point of minus 0.54 to minus 0.59 degrees Celsius. The freezing point will rise if the water is added to the milk. Once the milk is checked, and passes the quality uh, parameters, it is then sent for the preheating process. Here the chilled milk is heated to about 40 degrees centigrade to facilitate easy separation of butter fat during standardization. After preheating, the milk is sent for the filtration process where large solid particles are removed by straining the milk through tubular metallic filters. A centrifugal clarifier may also be used to remove all the soils and sediment from the milk. Once the milk is filtered, it is sent for the standardization process where the cream and milk are first separated on a dairy line. The two elements are then mixed together again as per the requirements of dairy. Thus, standardizing milk is done to ensure that you end up with a product of consistent quality in the market. In a summarized form, standardization can also be defined as the adjustment of fat percentage and, uh, and the uh, solid not fat percentage. So after standardization comes the homogenization process, which is a universally practiced method of stabilizing the fat emulsion against gravity separation. In this method, milk is forced through a small passage at a high velocity, which causes the disruption of flat globules into much smaller ones. Consequently, it diminishes the creaming and may also diminish the tendency of globules to clump. This process reduces the flat globule size from an average of 3.5 micron meter in diameter to below 1 micron meter. After homogenization comes the most important step in dairy industry that is pasteurization which can be done by three ways that is LTLT low temperature long time which is done at 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. HTST high temperature short time done for 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. And then comes the UHT, that is ultra high temperature done for 125 to 138 degrees Celsius for around 2 to 4 seconds. This pasteurization step is important for both the customer and the active cultures that will be added since it eliminates the potential competitors in the environment. So after the pasteurization of milk is done, it is cooled to around 42 degrees Celsius. The starter cultures that is Lactococcus lectus, Lactococcus cremorus, or the leuconostoc species are added. This step of addition is called inoculation. 
The mixture is then poured into their desired cups that is the packaging part. After the cups, after that the cups are arranged in crates which are then transferred to a hot room or an incubation room. While the fermentation proceeds at around 30 to 42 degrees Celsius for around 4 to 5 hours. The temperature of milk is then maintained around 42 degrees Celsius until the pH reaches 4.5 which is a sign of sufficient lactic acid production. So once a pH of 4.5 is uh, reached, the curd is cooled to around 7 degrees Celsius to stop the fermentation process. These crates are then transferred to a room with a temperature 3 to 4 degrees Celsius for proper setting and storage of the curd. So that was a whole process about curd manufacturing. Now there is another term called yogurt which is often confused with the term curd. So let us understand the difference between curd and yogurt. The processing steps of yogurt and curds are absolutely same. The main difference lies in the kind of organisms or the starter culture used. Yogurt uses Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus specifically. Whereas in curd, it includes a broad range of lab species like Lactobacillus lactis, Lactobacillus cremoris, Leuconostoc species, etc. It is the kind of Organisms that is used causes the yogurt to be a bit more acidic as compared to the curd. A yogurt may have added sweetness whereas in curd it is specifically made of the natural flavors. So that was a brief idea about the manufacturing steps in curd. I hope you have enjoyed the video and if you find it informative kindly like and share and subscribe the video. For more informative videos stay tuned to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.